Hi, this is Heather Smith here, and here's a short video on how to record retention monies in Xero. Now, there are several ways to do it, but I'm just going to explain one way, and this is the way that I'm suggesting you, your bookkeeper, your accountant may have a different way, but here's the way uh, I'm suggesting on recording retention monies in Xero. So what I'm going to go through is I'm going to create a retention monies asset account. I'm going to record a sale. I'm going to apply a partial payment to that sale. I'm then going to record the retention monies and close off the sale. I'm going to create a new invoice for the retention monies to collect them um, and potentially any other income there that needs to be collected. And while I'm doing this, I'm going to show you the impact on the balance sheet, the profit and loss, and for Australian viewers, uh, the activity statement. However, that's showing you how the tax is being impacted by these changes. The scenario is quite simple. There's an invoice for $55,000, which includes $10,000 retention monies. The uh, business receives payment for $45,000 and then needs to recognize the $10,000 in retention monies. Once the retention monies are due, they raise an invoice for $10,000 to receipt the retention payment. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a retention monies asset account. Click here on settings, here on chart of accounts, and then you come here into this screen. And we're going to click on add account, current asset there. And the code will be 700. And I'll call it, I'll call it retention monies. And I um, will show it on the dashboard watch list, okay? And I'm going to click uh, save here. So you can see it there, sitting there, retention monies. That's me creating uh, that account for it to be allocated to. The second thing I'm going to do is record a sale. So if I click to this screen, I've recorded a sale. It's the customer Bob for building work. It's 1st of January, uh, the price is uh, $55,000 because this is $50,000 exclusive. So $50,000 and it has $5,000 uh, GST on it. So let's come here into the balance sheet. I'm just flicking to the balance sheet. So you can see as at 31st of March 2017, the accounts receivable is $55,000 and the GST liability is $5,000. I'm going to click on my profit and loss statement. And here my profit and loss statement for the quarter January through to March shows that my income is $50,000. So what I'm going to do is pop back into my invoice. And here I'm now going to apply a partial payment to the sale. So I'm going to record that $45,000 was received. I'm going to record that that was received on the 1st of February, paid into the bank, and I'm simply going to click add payment onto that. So now uh, the invoice is sitting there with $10,000 due on it. And if I come here into my balance sheet, you can see that $45,000 is in the bank account, it was received, and there's accounts receivable of $10,000, and there's a GST liability of $5,000. If I click on my profit and loss, it remains unchanged. Construction and building income of $50,000. If I look at my BAS statement, the total sales is $45,000, and the GST on sales that it's recording is $4,090. So the GST liability is $5,000, but the GST um, on sales here is $4,090. Because it's running on a cash basis and it's only recognizing the GST on that $45,000. I'm popping back into the invoice. That's accounts, sales, and then I search for my invoice. And I'm going to record the retention monies and close off the sale. So this is a little bit tricky area of what I'm going to do. I'm going to come here into my invoice options and I'm going to select add a credit note. And it automatically pops up for me. I'm recording the credit note as of 
the 1st of February 2017. I'm going to put in there the job reference number just so it's um, highlighted so you can see that I was tracking it with a job number here, J001. And I could put that in the credit note as well if I wanted to. So J-001, if I wanted to. It is for building work and it's for $10,000. But here I'm going to allocate it to retention monies. And I'm going to um, allocate GST on income to it because I want to reduce the GST. I don't want to recognize that GST on my BAS statement. I don't want to recognize that GST on my BAS statement. And what I'm doing here is technically reducing that invoice and closing that invoice off and transferring the monies to um, retention monies. So let's see what we have here. So I'm going to um, record that and you can see that the invoice has been paid off. The invoice has been paid off and is now closed. If I pop here into my balance sheet and I'm going to update my balance sheet and you'll see that the banking amount, $45,000, is in the banking. That remains unchanged. The retention monies is recognizing that there's um, $9,090.91 sitting in retention, but that on top of that is the GST amount. It's recognizing that currently there is a GST liability of $4,090.91. Um, and uh, current year's earnings, if I scroll down a bit further, is 50,000 there. Clicking on my profit and loss remains unchanged. Clicking on my business activity statement, you can see I've got total sales of 45,000, but my GST on sales is still $4,090 because I didn't want my GST to be impacted by me um, taking that retention money and uh, placing it uh, in my asset account because I'm just recording it. I'm putting it aside and recording that that, that money needs um, to be uh, collected, but I don't owe GST on it right now. To further prove, I'm just pop here into my chart of accounts. To further prove what's happened, you can see here retention monies, $9,090.91. If I click on that, you can actually see, um, so if you're in a situation that you've got uh, multiple ones um, accruing or being listed here, you can actually drill down, see the information and then match it when you record um, the transaction on the other side. So we need to now, so what we now need to do is create another invoice for customer Bob, recognizing the retention monies that are owed to us. So I'm going to click on my plus up here and create a new invoice, a quick way to create an invoice. Type in customer Bob here, customer Bob. And normally this would be quite some time. It might be nine months, it might be a year, but I'm just going to do 1st of March here and I'll go plus seven there. Now remember, the amounts are inclusive of GST, so I only need to type in 10,000 here, retention monies, there's GST on those retention monies, and it's allocated to job 001. Okay, so I'm going to, I'm going to approve that, and let me show you what's happened here in the balance sheet. I'll update it. Everyday Banking still has the $45,000 received into the bank account. Accounts receivable are now being recognized as being uh, $10,000. The GST liability is $5,000 as it was originally. Click on my profit and loss. Update. Still. Income is recorded at $50,000. Click on my business activity statement. Update. $45,000. And still the GST is $4,090 because that money has not been receipted yet. The money, $10,000 hasn't been receipted yet, so the GST amount is not being recorded there because it's on a cash basis. Pop back into the invoice and let's, oh, let's record that $10,000 coming in. Uh, we'll say they paid us quite quickly. They paid us on the 31st of March, paid into the everyday bank account, add payment. This is completely closing off job 001. And let's see how this has impacted us. 
We now have $55,000 in the everyday bank account. We have a GST liability of $5,000. We have current year earnings of $50,000. Again, this remains unchanged. We have income of $50,000. Our BAS recognizes total sales of $50,000, GST on sales of $5,000, and recognize that the payment of $5,000 is due there. So this is one way you can record your retention monies in zero. It's not the only way, um, and it works well if you're operating on a cash basis. Thank you so much for watching the video. If you need further assistance, please contact me at Heather Smith Small Business, and I'd really appreciate it if you could like the video below. That would be sensational. Thank you.